The division of Durek is the largest constituency in the world by land mass, comprising 64% of Western Australia's area, essentially looking to cover everything north of Perth. Melissa Price is the elected representative of Durack's electorate in Western Australia. She's been in office since 2013. So surely if we look at the policies that she's voted for in Parliament, the actions that determine whether or not a minister is actually representing the interests of the electorate, we might see how much she represents her people. Looking at the voting patterns, it appears quite strongly that Melissa Price does not in any way represent her electorate and indeed votes with her party in 100% of cases even if the thing she is voting for is explicitly going to harm the people of Northwestern Australia. It seems that the only reason she is in office at all is to represent the interests and wishes of Scott Morrison and his cabinet. Melissa Price has voted consistently against increasing media diversity, which means that Australia, with some of the most centralised media on earth, will continue to be voiced either by Murdoch or Nine Fairfax and the voices of the average Australian will not be heard, allowing misinformation to spread further. Melissa Price has voted against a Rural Commission to Violence and Abuse Against People with Disabilities in 2017, in line with the rest of her party. This bill directly addressed the fact that children with disabilities have three times higher rates of violence within the community, and this often happens in places that are meant to provide support. This had functionally 100% labour support. Melissa Price voted consistently for reducing the corporate tax rate through things like the Treasury Amendment called the Enterprise Tax Plan, which would have eventually allowed big businesses to pay less tax, meaning big multinational companies can ship all of Australia's wealth outside of Australia, while regular taxpayers still have to pay the same amount for services. Small businesses would also technically get a tax cut from the tax plan, but they would be functionally worse off due to having to compete with much less taxed big businesses. And it's not like we overtax businesses either, as when compared to other countries in the OECD, that is countries with similar standings to Australia, there is no evidence based on their corporate tax rate that Australia lowering theirs would benefit the economy at all, and in fact it would have negative consequences on the economy. Melissa Price has voted consistently for privatising government services, one example being that she supported the migration amendment called Streamline Visa Process Bill, which would see the job of handling visa applications be shipped to an unrelated company. This will, like it has with other services privatised by the Liberal National Party, result in job cuts, increasing unemployment, and with the cuts to service delivery likely to increase visa fraud, undermining border security of the country. Melissa Price has also voted in line of a party to prevent the National Cancer Screening Register Bill in 2016, essentially allowing companies to profit from cancer rather than cancer screening being part of the Medicare system and thus have treatment be accessible. Melissa Price voted in line with the rest of her party to prevent Christian Porter from being investigated for financial corruption back in October of 2021. Christian Porter, who was a Liberal Attorney General, saw that the whistleblowers who reported war crimes were punished rather than protected, main example being David McBride. Christian Porter was also known to have literally spied on foreign governments. Melissa Price followed the party line in protecting Christian Porter and preventing the crimes he committed and may have committed from being investigated properly. Melissa Price, through voting against the Customs Amendment Bill in 2019, has effectively sold out foreign companies such as those owned by China and the United States. Melissa Price voted consistently to reduce worker power in the construction industry, voting to attempt a re-establishment of the ABCC and implement a means to punish people for taking industrial action, preventing workers from fighting for their rights. Melissa Price voted consistently for increasing the debt limit, voting no against Labor pushes to reduce the debt limit from $500 billion to $400 billion, with the $500 billion debt limit initially introduced during the Abbott Liberal government in 2013. In spite of calling themselves good economic managers, the Liberal Party has a generally appalling record of physical management and has plunged Australia into the most debt it has ever seen in its entire history combined. 
Melissa Price voted to allow the Targeting Income Tax Transparency Laws Bill in 2015, which would have seen information about big private companies become inaccessible to most Australians and make companies able to hide themselves further from scrutiny. Currently, companies whose wealth exceeds 100 million have to have their ABN, total annual income and annual taxable income. Requirements to publish tax info were introduced by the Labor government in 2013. Melissa Price has voted consistently with her party to silence other ministers who wish to question the government on their actions, such as stopping opposition leader Anthony Albanese from scrutinising the Liberal Party on their poor COVID-19 management in aged care, and even stopping other rural MPs like the Territory MP Warren Snowden from questioning the Prime Minister. Melissa Price voted consistently against a fast transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy, or even economically a sound transition, opting instead for policies that waste taxpayers' money such as voting for regulations and determinations, Australian Renewable Energy Agency implementing the Technology Investment Roadmap Regulations 2021, that is a long name, which has been described as policy that attempts to use Australian Renewable Energy Agency to funnel cash to coal and gas corporations, again creating corporate welfare. Through voting for the Higher Education and Research Reform Amendment Bill in 2014 and 2015, Melissa Price has blatantly supported the deregulation of university fees, allowing universities to charge immense amounts of money for courses with high interest, like doctors, allow indexing, and allow universities to charge postgraduate research fees, essentially charging students for doing research which will make it more difficult in this country to get important public interest work done and the profits they hold. Melissa Price has voted against supporting the Australian arts sector during the pandemic, which would reduce the viability of Australian produced media in this country, further increasing the dominance and presence of foreign media like Hollywood in Australia, undermining our sovereignty. Melissa Price voted against increasing protections against sexual harassment in the workplace by voting against the Respect at Work Amendment Bill, which sought to reduce roughly 30% sexual harassment rate in the workplace, reduced through simple evidence-based measures including improved and more effective education and information, all fairly and easily affordable policies that have researched effectiveness that are roundly ignored by Melissa Price and her party. Through voting against an amendment in the Family Violence and Cross-Examination of Parties Bill that would increase funding for legal aid, Melissa Price voted in line of a party to make court even more of a rich man's game and making it near impossible for someone without a lot of money and wealth to defend themselves in court or pursue justice. Something only people who can afford private lawyers, which are very expensive, can do. She's voted consistently for a combined federal circuit and family court in Australia, making it more difficult for those seeking court action for familial cases. She's voted consistently against increasing the age pension, further making it difficult to older folks through policy measures such as pausing indexation, essentially no longer adjusting payments for inflation, giving people the same amount of money even though things are more expensive. It can be more difficult for pensioners to get by. She's voted consistently for cashless welfare payments, costing the taxpayer more as they have to commission the cards at an exorbitant price and making it more difficult to pay for services at non-multinational institutions. This policy disproportionately affects Aboriginal people and is a direct offence to the Closing Gap Initiative introduced by the Rudd government. There, I thought I'd make a boring version of last video that just lays out the policies like that so it's easy to understand these are some of the things Melissa Price has voted for. This is why she should not be voted for this direct election, as she does not vote in our own interest and only votes in the interest of Scott Morrison and the Liberal Party's goals, which are very self-centred.